Grand Oak Podrig is an absolute monster for Hard Fire Knight. For the longest time, I was only doing Hard Fire Knight 6. Then I moved up to Hard Fire Knight 10. And not only did I break my previous record, I've also made the run a little more consistent. The thing that makes him stand out is his ally attack with the full ally destroyed max HP restorage. Right now, Marishka is the only champion that restores max HP that's destroyed. And when you go up against the Hard Fire Knight, your max HP is getting destroyed, which means you're also going to be healing a lot less. But he takes care of that along with doing the ally attack. Plus, he has the turn meter fill by 20%. And then he has the removal of all debuffs with the increased speed. He actually also brings more speed with his aura. And then at the beginning of his turn, every single time he takes a turn, he's going to be doing increased attack, defense, shield with accuracy, depending on what kind of champion that you have. I want to show you guys the run. This is the team here, the same team that you guys have seen before, but I took Farrakhan the Fat out because he was not reliable enough as a um, ally attacker. He was able to do it, but the run didn't feel too sturdy. But now, now I feel good about it. This specific team is geared towards, well, the people who have these champions. But if you don't have these champions, then, um, you know, there's going to be alternatives available to you. But this is just like if you happen to go for Padraig, if you don't have cardio, there's other ally attack champions. I was using Ferric in the Fat. You could even make a team using two Ferric in the Fats. You're basically just looking for um, ally attack champions, preferably like four turn cooldown and below. You could even use somebody like Royal Guard Husk with the right affinity matchup. You could definitely get away with doing EMH P moves like that. But there's a whole plethora of teams. It's all about experimentation. Raid is basically that. Wait till you summon a champion or just come back later when you have the gear for it. This is very gear intensive. But yeah, again, this is an end game dungeon. Don't go in with the mindset that you can't do something. Go in with the mindset that you can't wait to be able to do something and you will. So we're going to start off and I'm going to take my, my face off here so you guys can see for a minute. Look, full auto. I'm not going to touch anything. Now, um, I'll show you guys the presets. I'll show you his build real quick. I'll, I'll skim over it through everything. But this is the team here. We have Razzlevarg with his turn meter boost, taking turns. He hits pretty hard himself. We've got Nut in the team who's able to help, without, um, help with the wave clearing, doing magnificent damage to the boss, as well as pushing back turn meter with his A1. He's got the multi-hitter. Rabbit's got the multi-hitter. Grand Oak Podrick himself is able to keep the team alive, and he's able to bring increased speed and the heals. Stagnite is bringing the decreased defense as well as the decreased attack, which helps not only in the waves to get through the waves a lot sooner, but also when it comes to fighting the boss himself. Of course, we have Cardiel as well with his ally attack and then his ability to do the heals on his A1s as well as um, his... What's, oh, he, he's got his passive where he joins in attacks. So this is an awesome mega team right here. The shield is at 21. The first ally attack pops off. Then Grand Oak Podrick is going to go ahead place all the buffs with the continuous heal, and then he's going to do his ally attack. And so now we're down to one. Razzlevarg puts it down. We're placing the decrease speed with Stagnite. Stagnite is such an awesome, epic champion. If you don't have him, he's not that hard to get. He, I mean, he's he's not a void epic champion. He, he's, he's a regular epic champion. And as you can see, the decrease uh, attack and the decrease defense is now placed. The Fire Knight does hit pretty hard. Watch this right here. So as you can see, there was some destroyed max HP. We're going to do some counterattacks here. And you're going to see it when Grand Oak Padraig does his A2. He's going to restore everybody's max HP right there. Then he does the ally attack as well as place the continuous heals. And then he does the buff removal with the increase to speed. So our team is going to be going 30% faster as opposed to before. And it's going to be um, more so at 100% uptake because now we have two champions placing the increase speed buff. Having Leech also helps. And then Nut, of course, is going to do his EMHP move. If you don't have Nut, there's other champions that you could uh, try and, and you know build. But Nut just happens to be the fastest one on my team to be able to do that. And look at this, guys. 2 minutes and 28 seconds, 52 turns. 200, uh, 2 minutes and 12 seconds was my best time. But guys, it's insane because... For the longest time, ever since last year, since the beginning of this year, basically, I wasn't doing Hard Fire Night 10. So if you're struggling to do Hard Fire Night 10 or even climb in Hard Fire Night, I suggest that if you did go for Podrig, it is worth 
trying to build a team around him because he just brings so much to the table. Let's go ahead and do one more run just so we can do a consistency check. By the way, do you guys know of any uh, champions that I could implement in this team? Who should I take out that will help me to clear this a lot faster? The thing that is keeping me kind of at a uh, over two minute run, I think is the wave clearing because everybody is pretty much doing their A1s and uh, I haven't, like, I'm not letting them use any of their other abilities. This seems to be the reason why I haven't been able to get to the boss sub minute. Well, I mean, technically, I've done a few where it's been like a sub minute where I get to the boss, but that's like, I don't know, a few seconds only. My thing is, if you're able to get to the boss at all under a minute, then you're doing pretty well. If you guys have anybody else who can do uh, this a lot faster, let me know. I don't have Jintoro, by the way. Because I know his animations are fast. That's the thing, guys. Grand Oak Podrick actually has relatively slow animations. Feels a lot slower. And you can see his movements when he lifts his staff and then slams it down. It just takes a while to do. But guys, I'm if you can't tell, I'm like really, really, really happy that I can finally do this. I'm, I'm excited. Brimstone is popping off because it's uh, on. Uh, it's a five-star blessing. I have a five-star blessing on Razalvarg himself. I'm just really happy that I'm finally able to do this consistently i haven't failed yet now i've only run this a good i don't know um 40 ish times and i don't want to call that 100 percent. so i'm not going to say that this is 100 percent, but it's pretty consistent um so if you guys don't have grand oak project when it comes to doing hard fire night uh, obviously you could just do like hard fire night one or two six even there's no real need to get to hard fire night 10 and um it's, it's one of those things where it's like, if you can, then you should. But if you can't, don't stress about it because you're totally fine just doing Hard Fire Night 6. Right here, Hard Fire Night 6, you have a near 1% to get a 6-star mythical. Wait, what's, what is that? Stage 6? It goes from 5.9 to 5.12 from stage... Why is that the case for 6-star legendary? Anyway, look at this. 6-star mythical, 1%, basically. 6-star legendary... 5.12%. But when you go up to stage 10, the increase is relatively minuscule for when it comes to 6-star legendary, but it is a little bit higher, basically just about half, I should say, for 6-star mythical gear. There is nothing wrong with doing stage 6 if that's where you're at. If you can't get to stage 6, then you're fine doing 2, stage 1 or stage 2. Guys, it's better to do the hard fire night 1 or 2 than it is to do uh, normal 20 or normal 24 or 25 and so for round one we're opening and then closing out the a2 then closing out the a3 then we're just going to close everything out for round two and that's to make sure that we go into round three with our abilities available to us so we're doing one and then two or uh, a2 then a3 prioritizing one and two cardiel is going to be doing kind of the same thing, opening with his ally attack and then closing out skills. Same thing for round two. And then for round three, we're going to not bother with doing Angel Song. We don't have to do this anymore because we have Podrick here who is able to do the cleanse. And he's going to focus on doing his ally attack and then just his A1. Nut is going to be closing out his Blessed Bash. He can open with the A1 three and then close out so that we can go into the round three against the hard fire knight with his blessed bash available and then we're going to close out the a2 because we don't really need it uh, i've done both where i've left it open and i've let him put his counter attack up but the run always seems to be faster every time i let the a2 uh, stay on so we're going to open with the a1 so that you know we get the shield down faster or even if the shield is down by the time nuts ready to go we're going to be pushing back that turn meter because the hard fire knight has his turn meter reduced whenever you try to place, uh, place a freeze on him, and Nut does that. Razzlevarg opening with the A3, going to do the a uh, AoE. Then the same thing for here, except we're doing the Leech. Uh, there's no... You can kind of do whatever you want there. I just happen to do it. And then we're closing out the moves so that we can go in to round three with our increased speed ability and then the Leech. I guess that's why I did one and then... Yeah. Okay, anyway. Stagnite, we're going to open with the A2 so that we can do the decrease defense and decrease attack. And I found that it's a lot faster when I close this out. This is specific for my team setup, my speeds. So, uh, you know, the best thing you can do is try to test it out and see which variations work and just kind of tweak it a little bit depending on uh, how things are for you. Because uh, what 
is exactly the way for me may not be exactly the way for you and we're going to open with stagnites a1 so we can get that decreased speed and that double hitter down so that we can get the shield down a lot faster grand oak podrick is such a huge monster of a champion he's an absolute demon for this and i'm so happy that i got him i have him built in a relentless set we're trying to get him to take as many turns as possible when it comes to the priority stats that I was looking for, I was mainly focusing on speed. So you're going to see that I have a lot of gear that has speed rolls on them, some triples and doubles. And if you guys are not able to get the same stats that I have, then it's it's still going to be the same thing. Try to get him in, in Relentless, but if you can't get him in Relentless, try to get him to speed. The main thing that I really only cared about here was speed. I understand that 326 might not be available to a lot of you guys this is an end game dungeon for sure but if you're working your way up here all you have to know is that speed is king when it comes to building grand oak padrid so if you were going to build him focus mainly on um, getting him to go as fast as possible i would also recommend i strongly encourage you guys to put some hp and some defense on him too in case he does get hit you don't want him dying right away you want a good HP to defense uh, balanced ratio. Also note that in the Fire Knight, because I was doing Live Arena and I maxed out the speed, uh, he is going actually a lot faster. So he's going 346 with that 25% uh, boost when he goes into Hard Fire Knight. So he's going a little bit faster. And if you guys were going to go ahead and try to get a blessing on him, I would most definitely go with Intimidating Presence to increase your team aura. You could also use him in Arena and other... Uh, places so there's nothing wrong with taking ip as always do not blindly copy masteries but feel free to blindly copy these masteries we're going down the defense tree for some resistance extra healing with rejuvenation extra healing with shadow heal whenever we're going up against somebody that does heal themselves we're taking resurgent for a chance to remove a random debuff and then we're going to take time or delay death for some damage mitigation up to six percent we're taking solidarity to increase ally res by five for each buff placed on them by this champion and he is placing quite a bit of buffs so there's nothing wrong with taking increased ally res plus on this side there's not really anything else uh, with the path that i followed that will that's going to help on this side of the tree so there's that and then we're taking cycle of revenge and we'll talk more about this part in a bit taking extra hp extra value of heals that this champion casts does anybody know if this affects the continuous heals so like you know he places the 15 percent continuous heal buff does this mastery help out with that can someone tell me then we're going to take cycle of magic to have a chance to decrease the cooldown of a random skill at the start of his turn and then he is going to be taking a lot of turns so that helps lasting gifts so we can extend the buffs that he places and then we're taking, just in case somebody does die, then he's going to go that much faster with Spirit Haste. And then for his T6 Mastery, we're going to take Timely Intervention so that whenever an ally's health drops below 25%, he is going to have a big boost to his turn meter so that he can go ahead and place his buffs or restore some destroyed max HP or place the continuous um, heals. And if you guys have been on the fence about whether or not you should get him, do I think he's worth it? It kind of depends on where you are in shards. I pulled about 20. So if, if you're close to it, I would probably go for it. He is a guaranteed champion and he is guaranteed to bring a lot to your account, especially when it comes to doing hard fire night, because I actually go out of my way for region and savage gear. But if you're not ready for Hard Fire Night 10, why not try Hard Fire Night 6?